stories are the most powerful thing on earth. They are literally life and death. Wars are waged based on the story of who is the hero and who is the villain. You are the result of a story your parents told each other. The one night stand, the soulmate, and friends who became so much more. Life and death. So wouldn't you like to understand them better, these stories? How Story Works, an elegant guide to the crafts of storytelling by Lonnie Diane Rich, demystifies stories and helps you understand why you love what you love, why you hate what you hate, and why prologues are almost always a bad idea. How Story Works by Lonnie Diane Rich. Available on Amazon in ebook, audiobook, and paperback form. Get your copy today. Welcome to Still Pretty, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer podcast from Chipperish Media. I'm film scholar and a dark force fueled by grief, Noelle LaCroix. And I'm story expert who can kill a couple of geeks all by herself, Lonnie Diane Rich, and we are here today to talk about Grave, the 22nd episode of season six. Grave aired on May 21st, 2002, and it was written by David Fury and directed by James A. Contner. Still Pretty is a fully spoiled, full spectrum Buffy podcast. So if you haven't seen all of the show, go take care of that and we'll do battle with a bunch of demon bugs to get our souls back. Buckle up, Rupert, because I've turned pro. Let's go on patrol. In Grave, we pick up where we left off with Giles confronting Willow over her misbehavior, and Willow decides she'd rather fight Giles than Buffy. Giles throws a binding spell on her, and it holds her, almost unmoving, except for the glaring side eyes she shoots at Giles as he walks past her to catch up with Buffy. Giles and Buffy go into the back room, and she tells him everything that's gone wrong, finishing with the fact that she's been sleeping with Spike. And he laughs. He laughs. He laughs. In the magic box, Willow uses her telepathic powers to get Anya to set her free and then interrupts the hilarious tales of Buffy's trauma and torment to dump an unconscious Anya on the ground. Willow doesn't live here anymore. Giles tries another binding spell, but it fails. He and Willow shoot magic at each other until finally Willow goes flying through some pillars and everything crashes down around her. And if you thought that was the end of that, then you didn't notice that we have, like, 30 minutes of the show left. Anyway, out in the residential streets of fair Sunnydale, Xander, Dawn, and the Tweedles, Dee, and Dumb are wandering around trying to figure out what to do next when Xander interrupts his self-pity party to drop the news to Dawn that Spike sexually assaulted her sister and Dawn doesn't believe him. Meanwhile, in the magical cave of demony whatnot... You just bring it on. Bring on the whole... bloody hell... Back in the magic box, Giles tries to bring Tara into this and Willow is all avoidy, but magically murdery avoidy. She throws a fireball into town, heading to kill Jonathan and Andrew and anyone helping them, like Dawn. Buffy runs after the fireball and leaves Willow and Giles to catch up. Willow taunts Giles about his hypocrisy, which, you know, she's not wrong. And Giles tells her that she's going to burn out her magical energy and she takes his. He falls to the ground completely spent and Willow stumbles back. She can feel everything now, everyone's pain. And it's a lot. So she decides to make the pain stop by making the world stop. Oh, you poor bastard. Your suffering has to end. Meanwhile, the fireball races towards Xander, Dawn, and the Tweedles, but so does Buffy, who shouts and warns them. Everyone gets out of the way, and the fireball crashes into the earth, creating a big hole. Xander falls and hits his head on a tombstone, down for the count. Buffy and Dawn fall into the hole, as do the two swords the Tweedles have been carrying around. The Tweedles survey their surroundings. Buffy and Dawn in the hole. Xander knocked unconscious. Then Dee looks at Dom and says, Mexico, huh? Anya sits with Giles while he lay dying amidst the rubble that was once her livelihood and discuss how Willow took all of Giles' borrowed magic, which is the real source of magic, TM, which is about hand-holding and kittens or some such, but it backfired and now Willow's going to destroy them all. So not only is Giles dying, but Anya's going to die soon too, but she sits there and pats his shoulder anyway. Down in the pit of despair, Buffy's trying to pile up coffins so they can get out of there, but Dawn wants to talk. 
She confronts Buffy about what Spike did and says she doesn't want to be protected anymore. In the middle of that fight, Xander walks up and Buffy tells him to get a rope. Then Anya teleports in, tells them what Giles did and what Will is about to do and how no one can stop it, but she's going to go back and sit with Giles while he dies. Anya pops out, Xander's just gone, and now Buffy doesn't know what to do, how to stop Willow. Willow, meanwhile, is raising a temple to end the world, but she takes a moment to telepathically commune with her best friend. Willow, what are you? It was me who took you out of the Earth. Well, now, the Earth wants you back. And now the pit of despair is full of demons. Buffy fights them off, but there are too many. She asks Dawn to help, and Dawn picks up a sword and they fight. At the magic box, Anya comforts Giles through his impending death. Out on the bluff, Xander stumbles between Willow and the temple she's raising. He tries to joke with her, and she shoots lightning at him. Back in the magic box, Giles' eyes fly open. It's not over. On the bluff, Xander talks to Willow. He tells her stories of their childhood together. He, oh, whatever, copyright be damned. Here it is. You've been my best friend my whole life. We're all gonna end. Where else would I want to be? Is this the master plan? You're gonna stop me by telling me you love me? Well, I was gonna walk you off a cliff and hand you an anvil, but you seem kind of cartoony. Still making jokes. I'm not joking. I know you're in pain. I can't imagine the pain you're in. And I know you're about to do something apocalyptically evil and stupid, and hey, I still want to hang. You're Willow. Don't call me that. The first day of kindergarten, you cried because you broke the yellow crayon. And you're too afraid to tell anyone. You've come pretty far, ending the world, not a terrific notion. But the thing is, yeah, I love you. I love crayon breaky Willow, and I love scary veiny Willow. So if I'm going out, it's here. If you want to kill the world, well, then start with me. I've earned that. You think I won't? It doesn't matter. I'll still love you. Shut up. I love you. I love you. Shut up! I love you, Willa. Stop! I love you. Stop! I love you. In the magic box, Giles sits up, feeling much better now. In the pit of despair, the demons fade away, and it's just Buffy and Dawn. Buffy starts crying, and at first Dawn is insulted, thinking she's disappointed that the world isn't going to end. Buffy says no and hugs Dawn, apologizing. She's not going to protect Dawn from the world anymore. She's going to show it to her. Dawn and Buffy crawl out of the pit. Jonathan and Andrew hitch a ride south with the truck driver. Anya helps Giles walk out of the magic box. And on the bluff, Willow disintegrates into Xander's arms, weeping as she finally succumbs to her grief. Oh, and off in the magical cave of demony whatnot. So you give me what I want. Make me what I was. So Buffy can get what she deserves. Very well. We will return your soul. Ah! All right.
right, Noelle. So here we are, end of season six, the season about relationships, the season that is all about this connection between people. And how do you feel about Grave? Oh, my gosh. So <laughs> I messaged you on Tuesday. Yes, it's you Saturday. did. It's Saturday as we're recording this. <laughs> I messaged you on Tuesday to tell you to brace for impact. Today was going to be rough. <laughs> Because I noped out of this episode twice before I got all the way through it. Mm -hmm. I nope out when Giles laughs at Buffy. Yeah. And once we clear that hurdle, there's not a lot worth sticking around for. (laughs) I mean, I mean, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. And as per usual, when Willow cries, I cry. But I think that's some sort of Pavlov's lesbian phenomenon. (laughs) <laughs> well, if it is, I'm joining you in that because Allison Hannigan never sheds a tear where I'm not like, oh, my God, you know, um, kills me every single time. And the thing that's funny is that I, I both hate and love this episode for for different things entirely. Like what I love, I love the meta fun of it, that there's all these new things that we haven't seen. I mean, Willow as a badass with Allison Hannigan getting to play the hell out of that fighting Buffy and Giles. I mean, that's kind of awesome. Mm-hmm. I love Giles as a badass with his long, dark trench coat and borrowed magic. But then again, I've always had a Giles thing. So, you know, fair enough. I think, okay, I've always had an Anthony Stewart head thing. I definitely have that. Yeah, Um, that's fair. And yeah, Giles at this point, uh, uh, Giles uh, post like Buffy coming back from the dead, you know, post season five Giles is is a Giles that I don't recognize. Like this guy doesn't make sense to me. Um, But I do love Anthony Stewart head. And when he comes in with the trench coat, he's all badass and magicked up like, you know, I dig it. Um, Dawn getting to kill a demon. Yeah. Swinging the sword, be all badass. I mean, I love that. I think that's fantastic. Um, Xander finally saying the right thing instead of the wrong thing. I mean, that's a new thing for him, right? (laughs) Um, And I also, I love the story turn that Spike is fighting for his soul. So these are all things that I really like. Unfortunately, a lot of it is a meta thing more than it is about what's actually going on in the story because a lot of this feels really weird. Like Giles, I I don't recognize this guy. I hate him laughing at Buffy's trauma. I hate that we make Buffy laugh with him instead of slapping him, right? Yeah. For leaving her, for abandoning her after she comes back from the dead, right? Instead of just being like, I can't say no to my baby, so let me fly across the world and leave you to deal with all of this by yourself. Like, I don't even know what that's about, you know? Um, I hate the weird thing with Jonathan and Andrew and the trucker at the end. It's one little moment, but it grosses me out. It's such you know? a bummer. And it's such a bummer in that like beautiful coda to the episode. Because yeah. as much as the mm-hmm. episode bothers me, I'm like, all right, the ending of this is like genuinely pretty great. It's really great. But then there's but like it's, yeah. fucking, oh, yeah. I don't even... And then it's ruined in that moment with them. All I needed was to see them leave. I don't need to see this moment where they're, you know, I don't know, in that weird, creepy space with the truck driver. Like, it just, it wasn't funny to me. Like, I don't, I don't know. They're not funny to me at this point, you know? Um, So, like, I hated that. Um, I hate Spike's whole thing being a really stupid mislead um, because they're lying to the audience. Instead of playing straight and using the momentum of reader assumptions to make us think that he's going to go get the chip removed so he could kill Buffy, instead of actively lying to us, like this would have worked, you know? Um, and the thing is, is that we have Spike saying, bitch is going to get what she deserves, and like all right. that kind of, you know, posturing, which is just unbelievably stupid. Um, and, you know, so we're doing that instead of just being straightforward you know and like showing us spike leaving you know you can have him say things that when you go back and rewind and you know he's fighting for his soul also make sense in that context you know i'm gonna go i'm gonna be what i was right if he says something like that in a way that like that lets us and then we know that he's not going back to pre-chip spike he's going back to pre-vampire spike that that's what he wants to be you know um i like what they do with Spike soul I like what we see in season seven this end of season six for Spike uh drives me crazy and I hate that like and then we cut away to like oh let me see Spike is you know battling all these really tough demons in the middle of this cave somewhere like 
I don't know. Like whenever we cut away from what we're actually doing to go see what Spike is doing, I'm like, and Willow's ending the world. Like Spike can fucking wait. You yeah. know, like yeah. Um, so yeah, like um, season six, I think does some really really interesting things. Um, but even while it's doing interesting things, like all it doesn't hold together as a full and complete narrative the way that I would really have loved to have seen. So. I'm with you on all the things that you hate, but there's a lot of stuff that I just, I love watching just as a fan of the show and a fan of these actors to get to see them do some fun stuff. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough call for me. Cause I, I, I don't like it, but I yeah. like it. Well, the, the ideas of it are all mm -hmm. really compelling. I think. Yeah. I mean, and we're doing like big themes here. So I feel like maybe mm -hmm. it should be quote unquote better than it is. <laughs> so like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. There's like, I mean, we're no stranger to big Christian symbolism on this show, right? right. Like, it's yes. so funny to me how much Christi Christianity exists in Buffy without really existing in Buffy. Well, yeah, no, I mean, I've talked about this a lot, like how we use all of these Christian symbols, which are charged with that history, you know, and with the power of those symbols, but we use them without really earning them, you know, and then I find your read of of what's going on here at the end, the Christianity in that so interesting, especially in that context of using symbolism that's not really earned in the text well i mean it is and it isn't right because it's culturally mm -hmm. there it's culturally right. there in the in the way that by and large american film and television is christian mm -hmm. because that is uh that's a that's a bigger much more zoomed out discussion but christian christian yeah symbolism and storytelling shows up in our stories for yes. mm -hmm. a lot of reasons because you know mm -hmm. dominant cultural paradigms gonna dominate but <laughs> right. you know and it's it's not like a new thing on buffy either mm -hmm. but this is right. so out there i mean a mm -hmm. humble carpenter saves the entire world from literal satan question mark mm -hmm. with love right. It's not right. subtle at all, <laughs> at all, at all. Like Xander no. says, I loved crayon breaking Willow and I love scary veiny Willow. So if I'm going out, it's here. If you want to mm -hmm. kill the world, well, then start with me. That's John 15 verse 13 right there. Like <laughs> greater love has no one than this, that a person will lay down his life for his friends. I mean, mm -hmm. it's so on the nose it's not subtle at all and i get it i mean yeah this is my kind of big loving gesture mm -hmm. the world is gonna end and i can save a whole bunch of people by putting my body in the line of fire like absolutely i will mm -hmm. willingly joyfully be a human shield mm -hmm. you're going through something and all you can think to do about it is hurt somebody cool i love you go ahead you can hurt me mm -hmm. but in grave the day is saved ultimately by two dudes just getting in the way. Right. Like, OK, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. It would feel different, I think, if we were still dealing with bad guys as yes. bad guys. Mm -hmm. If the solution to the problem of white cis men being abusive were other white cis men getting in the way heck yeah like i yes that's a great solution to this problem right but we're yes. not doing that mm -hmm. we're still in this like grief evil magic addiction power space with willow so the whole thing ends up feeling way too much like giles putting willow in her place so that xander's special boy love can reach her yeah. It dovetails pretty nicely with my read of Bad Magic Willow as homophobic. Mm -hmm. The love of a good man will turn your angry lesbian hair back to its natural color. <laughs> like, it's just not. I don't. Yeah. I don't like it, but I also love it because yeah. I just. It's so good. Xander doing something right for once. Xander saying the right thing for once. And, yes. you know, in a mm -hmm. season about relationships that, like, 
loving your friend is going to save the day. Like, heck yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. Yes. I love that. Um, but I have, you know, I mean, I have issues with it. I have issues mm-hmm. with this whole I I mean, I have issues with Xander. Well, yeah. I have issues with this whole storyline. I have the kind of issues that <laughs> that Freud would write about. Like <laughs> I have issues here. Um I really don't like it. Mm-hmm. I also respond really strongly to it. And yes. yes. Mm-hmm. You know, having said all that, Buffy and Dawn crawling out of the earth together while Sarah McLaughlin sings the prayer of St. Francis. Oh, oh, fuck yeah, that's and, you beautiful. Know what? Fuck you and your Sarah McLaughlin. The last time they did that to me was at the end of Becoming Part 2. And I swear to God, as soon as I hear that woman's voice now, I just start crying. It doesn't matter what the song is. It just kills me every time. Um, And it is. I mean, it's so it's sweet and it's beautiful. um, And it's but, you know, but also like, yeah, the implications of what is actually happening here. I think you have a very legit read on the homophobia that's underlying. I think a lot of this stuff that we need our our straight white cis men to come in and fix everything because the girls have just gone off the rails. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And that's the thing that like I I struggle with that because I both respond to it as so incredibly powerful, you know, and I, I love it. But there's there's context there. There's the rest of the season there. There's a lot of other things happening also in this space that are like, yeah, it's 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 worthy of a severe side eye, you know, and at the same time, go ahead and manipulate me. I kind of like it. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. The whole thing, the whole thing with Xander and Willow out of Mm -hmm. context gets me like I can pull that up I don't even need to be watching yeah the episode I don't even need to be in a mood I can pull Mm -hmm. up that scene where he's she zaps him with force lightning or whatever and he falls over and she's gonna go back to raising her literal satanic temple excuse me like (sighs) did you was there a record scratch in your brain when Anya's like (laughs) oh yeah king man's bluff satanic temple I'm like satan like literal like yeah, really like the satan now yeah this yeah. is what we're exactly doing? exactly like, especially with you know i mean willow tends to you know go with the goddess right so yeah. like but it's a goddess who is part of the satanic thing i, know. I don't know it doesn't it, it doesn't make literal sense. satan Come yeah. on. Like, Come yeah, on. let's go ahead. And it's the it's the end of the season. Let's go for broke. Um, You know, and but, I mean, the thing is, is that yeah. overall in season six, there isn't a lot of consistency, you know, no. um, and grave <laughs> feels like the wild end of a water hose that someone's lost control of just bouncing around shooting water everywhere until somebody figures out how to turn the spigot off, you know, yeah. and fair enough. You know, but the power of love here in this scene with Xander, you know, is really great. Like, I, I as much as I hate it, I love it. The world's going to end. He's going to be with Willow, you know. Um, and I've had moments where I kind of wish because of this, like, you know, men getting in the way kind of thing that Dawn had been there because Dawn is the one who has this connection to show Dawn with that power because we tend to shuffle her aside and not pay attention to her. But she is incredibly powerful. She is incredibly important. Mm-hmm. She was most connected with, with Tara and especially with Tara and Willow. Tara and Willow were her parents, you yeah. know. I mean, um, but also her but, I mean, like relationship goals, like not mm-hmm. not in a not in a Dawn is queer sense. Although here for it, Dawn has the makings yeah. of a great sword lesbian. Bring it on! <laughs> but in a in a like here is a positive loving relationship when that is. Here's a positive, loving relationship between people who are her sister's peers when her sister's love life has been so fraught. And Dawn Mm -hmm. sees that. And we know that Dawn has concerns about Buffy's future and what that means for her own, for Dawn's future. You know, we hear her talking about that a little bit with like life Mm -hmm. and career and things like that, but also love life wise so there is Mm -hmm. this like beacon of here is a good relationship here is a loving relationship here is something that i would like to have someday yeah it's there's that connection as well like yes they took care of her in this parental role they were there for her when buffy was dead and also like this is a 
this is an adult life that Dawn can kind of see mm-hmm. for herself. And that yeah. is that's deeply meaningful. I mean, we need that. We hang and on to And her relationship that. with Tara, like from the beginning, it was Tara who went out of the magic box and thumb wrestled with yeah. Dawn. Like Tara and Dawn, we don't do anything with it, really. But it's a wonderful, deep and loving relationship. And, you know, and I'm not I'm gonna say it again. Dawn sitting in the room with Tara. You know, she yep. stays there. I didn't want her to be alone. Like, that's beautiful. And it's yeah. it's just one more thing that's great about Dawn. That said, you know, we get what we get, right? And um, and I do love Xander and Willow as a relationship. I love that, you know, that deep, deep friendship that she is. I mean, we've seen his family. She is his family. She is his connection to everything. Mm-hmm. Without her, he is truly, truly lost, you know? And we do end with that. But the thing is, is that we've done nothing with that relationship since Xander and Anya got together. Like, since the end of season three, we haven't really, like, Willow was in school and Xander wasn't and they still fought the world together but the two of them like developing this really it's been a couple of years since we've seen them be best friends since we've seen them be close it's just it was established in the beginning and we've just sort of let that be she was upset you know about Anya and worried about Xander and Triangle so we saw Willow's deep love for Xander and how she cares about Xander but we didn't really see that relationship developing and then we bring this in at the end and I mean it's not that it doesn't entirely work it's just that it feels like it could have been charged a little bit more, especially because the end of the season kind of takes that sudden turn and all of a sudden it's like, okay, you know, we're doing something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that said, I mean, like, I love the power that love has, you know, to break everything down, you know, um, and to stop you know, it it doesn't stop the pain, but to be with the pain, like the best thing you can do when somebody's hurting is not make them feel better. It's just sit with them in their pain, sit with yeah. them in their grief. And he is sitting with her in her grief. And it gets me. And I'm oh, going to yeah. start crying now. So I need you to talk about Demeter and Persephone. <sighs> well, before I get to before I bring my my Greek mythology. In, I love it. Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I I love I I do not like this ending with mm-hmm. Xander and Willow, but I also love this ending with Xander. I like know. it's so difficult. It's so difficult. And some of it is, you know, some of it is the incredible performances and some of it mm-hmm. is, you know, my own stuff. But yeah, like just just thumbs up for love. Like just thumbs up mm-hmm. for <laughs> for being there with somebody who is going through something and you can't Mm -hmm. you can't stop them you can't fix it and willow is at her worst like her absolute worst and xander even says like you're gonna destroy the world and i still want to be with you exactly which i mean my god we all need that we need somebody Mm -hmm. who wants to who still wants us even when we are at our absolute worst yeah she's at her absolute worst and he (laughs) still wants to be there and he still loves her and he tells her that he loves her over and over again and it gets me every time it gets me um oh my god but yeah Demeter and Persephone, right? Heartless, Mm -hmm. hard pivot shall we although not really (laughs) because you know hard pivot Mm -hmm. but not really because you mentioned dawn Um, Mm -hmm. And specifically Dawn's power in this season, really her potential power, right? Right. Because, Mm -hmm. so we have have Buffy this season assuming this mothering type role to Dawn. Mm -hmm. And when Dawn is swallowed up by the earth in grave and Buffy goes in after her, we get a little bit of the myth of Demeter and Persephone. I love this. It's a bit, okay. I mean, it's a bit of a queering of that story, but I enjoy it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Dawn is actually very capable of handling herself in the underworld. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Which mm-hmm. is something that her sister slash mother doesn't realize immediately. Right. Persephone mm-hmm. knows how to survive in the underworld. She's not the helpless maiden you think she is. You know, there's this whole mm-hmm. bit about she has to return to the underworld because she eats the fruit of the dead 
But Mm -hmm. girl knows how to survive. Like she eats as little as possible (laughs) down there so that she can she can. Um, you know, so that she can con- continue to exist. Mm-hmm. But right. it's, a, I don't know. I love, first of all, I just love a, a feminist reworking of that story in general. Mm-hmm. But we've got Dawn in the underworld and she can fight lobster zombies with a sword <laughs> just fine. Yeah. Which is great, which is powerful. But before that, she knows her way around. She Mm -hmm. recognizes the space under the cemetery as looking like Spike's place under his crypt, which means Mm -hmm. Spike is Hades in this queer read, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll go somewhere with that sometime. And I know (laughs) I know that textually Dawn is bringing Spike up to continue the conversation with Buffy that Xander started with Dawn earlier. Mm -hmm. But Dawn's comfort and familiarity with difficult situations speaks to her courage in the dark Mm -hmm. dawn is queen of the underworld the vampires the demons and the forces of darkness don't face her Mm -hmm. and when buffy and dawn come back up out of the ground together the world around them is in full bloom so it's the return of spring persephone's back from the underworld and Mm -hmm. spring is back i don't know if there's a lot of there there but i like it I love it. I love that read. I think it's really great. And yeah, and I think that you've definitely, you know, landed on some, uh, some things there. I kind of want to read that, uh, that fanfic from you where Spike is Hades and Dawn is Persephone. And it's an inter- that would be an interesting I, read. Wouldn't, I mean, I think it, there's some, yeah. maybe there's something there. But the other, I think the most important thing that's there and that has mm-hmm. really been there all season long and we haven't done enough with it is this dawn dawn being comfortable with the dark and that's kind of an unintentional intentional pun right it's always darkest Mm -hmm. before the dawn like right dawn Mm -hmm. is not scared of any of this stuff yeah buffy's like it's Mm -hmm. dangerous it's dangerous it's dangerous and dawn is like yeah dude i know i want to help like i'm not she's not afraid she's not denying that it's dangerous Mm-hmm. But she is saying, I'm not afraid. And that's the well, part that yeah. Buffy's not hearing. So when and this is my problem when they do show Dawn being afraid mm-hmm. that it, it, I don't know, it irks me because I I think I said it last time when we were talking about two to go that mm-hmm. Dawn says over and over and over again, I want to be there. I want to help. I want to be there. I want to help. And then. You know, no, it's too dangerous. No, it's too dangerous. No, it's too dangerous. Well, then when she's there with Willow and she just cowers, it's such a bummer because we need this opportunity for her to stand up and and show that, yeah, Yeah. she like she is powerful and we get it here, but it feels it feels kind of anemic to me. I think because the mm-hmm. lobster root monster zombie, <laughs> whatever. I'm like, what? Why? Yeah. Like, this is just, we're just keeping Dawn and Buffy busy so that, you know, Xander can do his thing and Giles can look all wide eyed at the ceiling. Like, there's not, there, <laughs> there's not, and then we get, I don't know, then we get this, prof- well, maybe we'll get there when we get there, but th- we get this profound thing from Buffy about, I don't want to protect you from the world. I want to show it to you. And I'm like, really? This is like unearned. Yeah. No, this is I don't know. after school special kind of stuff that, you know, yeah, that that felt weird. Buffy's whole thing this season has just been weird. She's been a side character in her own show. Um, and so we kind of resolve this where she's like, you know, I've wanted to to die all season, but now, you know, now, now that, that my I'm... best friend has been turned into ultimate darkness yeah. and Giles is dying and the world is going to end, you know, like now I want to uh, show you everything, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like it doesn't. Well, and Buffy's it's, big. It's unearned. Like... A lot of the stuff from season six is just unearned. Yeah. I mean, Buffy's big. I want to live revelation comes after she's been 
doing goofy invisible antics all day. Like yeah, it's not right, right. Yeah, it's, I'm like whoa. Like it's it's emotional whiplash. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff though. Just in this, like we're okay. Here's here's what it, he, big picture. Here's what I'm bouncing off yeah. of. I think is mm-hmm. we are told so much in in this season, mm-hmm. um, you know, in general, but in this episode in particular, that I'm like, really though, like the whole yeah. the whole like Willow's killed a human being thing. Oh sure, yeah. You know the like so Giles is talking to Buffy and he's like, you ought to know Buffy. There's no guarantee that she'll be as she was and i'm like okay first of all fuck you um but <laughs> you know i've had that mm-hmm. i've had that rant i'm not gonna do that rant again mm-hmm. but that but giles says willow's killed a human being how will she be able to live with herself and i'm just like no 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 mm-hmm. no you know who else has killed a human being giles giles yes. at the end of season five kills ben who yeah compared to warren is not that bad Yes. Giles doesn't get sent to Wogheart's penitentiary for magic abusers. <laughs> and it never comes up again. It uh-huh. never comes up. It like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Faith also killed a human being. And no one seems to give right. two shits about Faith's well-being. Mm-hmm. I mean, so yes. much so that it was kind of chill for Buffy to stab Faith in the stomach. Right. And with the intent. I mean, the fact that Faith didn't die isn't because Buffy wasn't trying. Like, Buffy was going to take Faith and feed her with a gaping stomach wound to Angel. Like, Buffy's intent, the fact that she didn't kill Faith was an accident. Like, she intended to. And that is, that means that Buffy has also touched that darkness and like we do have an uneven sense of the forgivable you know in the Buffy verse right like so Faith kills and she's bad right and which I will like she accidentally killed Alan I think that that was something that you could have worked your way through uh when she killed the professor right you know Mm -hmm. I mean that was you know and she she went over the line with the mayor and all that kind of stuff and yes absolutely needs to come back from that um an angel over an angel was already you know five by five in sanctuary all ready to help her come back from that right he is the one who is ready to redeem and to help people come back and buffy we have this thing like killed a human nope done yeah for some of us yeah for some of us but not for all of us. I mean, Angel has killed, but he got his soul back and he was like super, super sorry about it. <laughs> right. So, okay, yeah. right? Spike has killed a lot, a lot. And he is not sorry at all. He just has a leash, you know? Yeah. Uh, but he can fight demons. So, you know, okay, with a little bit of side eye, right? Like, we're just kind of letting that be Spike, right? Um, and Giles killing Ben. Giles killed Ben. Ben is human, right? Yeah. Nobody. I mean, Ben. Okay. Ben is gross and awful and also ordered the killing of humans, you know, and listening to fear. And like, you know, he's he's bad and terrible and was going to sacrifice Dawn for his life. You know, all of that kind of stuff. Still human. And Giles killed him. And the thing is, is that we don't see Giles talk to anybody about that. He doesn't confess to it. He doesn't struggle with it. Nothing. Like, I think that we and Giles are the only ones who know he killed Ben, right? Yeah. Because everything else right then was crazy. Nobody else was really watching. Yeah. Um. So, like, why doesn't that come back on Giles? Why is that not a problem for him? There's this weird thing with Giles that we don't really explore ever where, like, mm-hmm. the rules don't apply to Giles somehow. Like, right. Giles is, like, Willow's not allowed to kill a human and, like be basically Mm -hmm. okay after but giles is allowed to and like willow is not allowed to be super powerful but giles is allowed to be super powerful like there's a well yeah uh, there's a lot here with Mm -hmm. like who who is allowed to have that kind of power this feels okay this feels like a woman thing it feels Mm -hmm. like like a, like a man can just be 
he -hmm. can be in the world and he can be complex. He can be, you know, Rupert Mm -hmm. Giles and also Ripper. He can be Angel and also Angelus. He can be Spike, who contains fucking multitudes, chip (laughs) or no chip, right? (laughs) But then, like, you know, Mm -hmm. if you're a girl, if you're a girl and you don't follow the rules, you're faith and you're bad, if you, or you're Darla, or yeah. you're, you know, yeah. or you're Willow, and you kill one really awful dude who had also killed, you know, right. not just like it, Warren. Warren mm-hmm. killed humans. Yes. Warren was going to kill Willow. Yeah, she kills him. I mean, arguably in self defense. Among other things. And again, the only reason Buffy's alive is accident. Like, Warren went there with the intent to kill Buffy. Yeah. You know, he also killed Tara. But he shot Buffy. Like, if he wasn't such a bad shot, Buffy would be dead. You know? And, like, and that is also something that Warren did. And somehow, Warren... You know, we're supposed to be like, well, there's human justice and he's going to go to jail, you know? Yeah. Um, But for a woman who does any of these things, it's we don't allow for that complexity. It's just she killed a human. She'll never come back from this. Oh, no, Mm -hmm. she's lost to us forever. Right. It's very mm, it's I mean. We do this about women all the time, right? Like, boys will be boys, but if you're a girl and you have sex even one time, like, you are corrupted. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, it's It's, it's pretty typical for the way that stories are told around, you know, men and women. Um, And, yeah, and so Giles showing up with, like, a lot of power. You know, I yeah. mean, power that is not his, power that he has borrowed. Yeah, right? let's talk about this borrowed power Giles sure. shows up with, yeah. shall we? <laughs> um, let's. <laughs> let's talk about this. Let's talk about, as long as we're talking about all the clunky things in this episode. Right. So, mm-hmm. okay, th- so this borrowed magic. Yes. I get the sense that this is supposed to be some sort of universal love and human compassion magic. Right. Except that it clearly doesn't work on Giles fucking laughing at Buffy. This isn't Giles. I'm sorry. Giles has not been since he left Sunnydale. Like, I I mean, the first time before Buffy came back from the dead. Like, he has not been Giles since then. I mean. It's weird. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, But I don't know. Maybe we'll. I mean, we'll get into we'll get into Giles in a minute. Um. But yes. <laughs> we'll get into Giles in a minute. So, <laughs> all right. But but universal love and human compassion, magic, blah, blah, blah. True essence of magic, you know, register, mm-hmm. trademark, accept, no substitutions, whatever. So <laughs> Willow yanks the magic out of Giles and says, it's like I'm connected to everything. I can feel everyone. She can mm-hmm. feel everyone who? Like all of everyone? Right. The implication seems to be that Willow feels All of human suffering, which Mm -hmm. no mortal person has ever done, right? We hear a couple of times that, like, no mortal person has ever had that much power. This much power, yes. And, like, Mm -hmm. that much power, quote unquote, overwhelms her with emotion and she decides to end the world. Right. Because of her humanity, question mark? Right. The only way to stop the suffering is to kill everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Giles says the magic she took from me tapped into the spark of humanity she had left, which the spark of humanity she had left. Okay. Fuck you. Is there, first of all, is there anything more human than grief anyway? Like that is, you know, (laughs) whatever. Whatever. Mm -hmm. But what I find fascinating about this is that, so Willow, Willow is feeling all of, all of the pain, right? Everyone's mm-hmm. pain, not just her own pain. And what's fascinating to me is that from Willow's perspective, pain is the same as harm. She's yeah. going to stop the world's pain by ending the world, which mm-hmm. kind of makes sense if pain and harm sure. are synonyms, right? Because mm-hmm. pain right. Mm-hmm. is physical, mental, or emotional suffering or torment, right? Mm-hmm. It's not a lot of fun, but it's a reality of yeah. The human experience. Harm mm-hmm. 
is the physical, mental, or emotional damage that might might result in pain. But it can Mm -hmm. also refer to moral injury, a.k.a. evil. So the mm -hmm. Slayer presumably is protecting the world from harm, not from pain. Right. Because the end of the world, I think, is probably going to result in some pain. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I imagine that that process, whatever the satanic temple was going to do, it wasn't going to be a blink out of existence and everybody's in a happy afterlife. Like, you know, there was going to be a lot of harm done yeah. that and a lot of pain caused. But I think that that's interesting that, you know, so this this we're tapping into we're we are saving the world. <laughs> Let me see if I have this right. We're saving the world. By mm-hmm. making Willow with her limited, her her diminished humanity think that pain is harm and therefore mm-hmm. she decides to end the world, to end the pain because she can't see the difference between pain, which is a reality of human existence and ha- mm-hmm. I don't know. I, what? <laughs> this magic it makes no sense. It's it's one of those things because everything happens so fast that you can tend to be like, oh, OK, I guess this is what we're doing now, you know, and just you're just riding along with it, you know. But I mean, the thing is, like, I love a lot, like stepping outside of how things have actually gone this season and thinking about how it could have been like the idea of Willow, you know, as the big bad, like, um. I think could be a lot of fun, right? But you you can't flip that switch. You yeah. know, we we do this whole season where we're talking Willow's problem is a drug problem. It is a drug addiction. That is the metaphor we're going with with magic. It's not as fun as the lesbian sex metaphor, but whatever, that's what they did, right? Um, but I mean, in the end, though, she is not doing this because she's addicted to drugs. This is happening because of unbelievable, unfathomable grief, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so for me, like watching Willow be the big bad for the season is really fun because I love seeing Allison Hannigan kill it with her performance. Um, But I don't believe this turn happens so fast in a season which up until now has been all about unearned power in men and misogyny and, you know, all of that kind of stuff that we had going on, this human darkness, right? Right. You know? Yeah. So but I mean, if Tara had died mid season, you know, and that was like what was going on around the time of Smashed and Wrecked, that it wasn't, you know, about Willow's but like that she had experienced that kind of grief at that point. And then we saw this slowly turn her. Um, We saw her struggle with the long tail of that grief. We saw her use magic to deal with with that grief. Um, and that's what the season was about. And Buffy had to struggle with being in combat with someone that she loves so deeply. Like, I think I could have been interested in that. But it's this last minute switcheroo at the end of the season where it's like, we're talking about human evil and misogyny and unearned power. And oh, oh okay, magic is drugs and recovery in that process. Okay, fine. But no, no, no. Now it seems to be the darkest despair of grief. And oh, whatever, Spike gets a soul. See you next season. Like, yeah. it just feels like it's all, it's that, it's that tail of the hose with the water still on just whipping around the lawn like it doesn't make a lot of sense there's a lot of stuff here that I could have really deeply enjoyed yeah but it just all turned too fast well just that flip just flip it around so that Tara if all right if you're gonna if Tara's gotta die whatever which by the way is not my preferred but no it's not my preferred how we're gonna tell this story if that's how we're gonna do this let's flip it around so tara tara Mm -hmm. dies willow can't do anything about it because it's a natural death by natural causes blah 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 blah. and willow starts using magic to cope with her grief which is a very real thing that somebody might do especially if they lost Mm -hmm. their connection to magic yeah if you want it like i we know I I don't love it. We know I don't love it. But if you wanted to tell a magical addiction story, it makes so much more sense on the heels of I, the loss of right. her lover than it does just kind of 
oh, Willow's getting too powerful. Willow's got it, you know. It does. But keep the magic as the metaphor for what she and Tara had together. She's looking And for she's connection. doing that on her own, yes. trying to reconnect with Tara so that it's not like a, it's it's that the magic isn't working. Yeah. Like it's not working because it's never going to work because Tara's not there. Yeah. You know, so like watching her process her grief like that. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, is something that would be a great thing to have a season of television about because we all at one point or another need to process grief. Grief is the inevitable consequence of love. It is the price yep. of admission for love, right? Absolutely. But eventually there's going to be grief, right? And you're going to have to walk through that. We all do at some point or another. And part of what fiction does, the the purpose that fiction has is to help us process our own shit, which is too complicated in our own complicated existences and go through that with a character and if we'd had the time to do that with her where the magic wasn't about the addiction it was just it was just never it never was soothing enough and so she just went yeah. further and further and further into it looking for Tara and being unable to find Tara within it like that to me I think would have been a really yeah. really interesting thing to do well and really painful too to realize that yeah. like when someone is gone the yeah. the the connection that you have with them the, the connection that you had with them when they were alive mm -hmm. will not happen again. I mean, that's the hardest thing to grapple with. When yeah. someone dies, you don't get any more of them. Mm -hmm. um, you have to move from loving them in life to loving them in memory. And the idea of Willow using magic to try to stay loving Tara in life yeah. would have been so, so powerful. Oh, God, yeah. um, so just I mean, I think just that switch would make this whole season work a lot better. But also, I mean, we've been griping all along about how with the trio, there's nothing for the Slayer to do because mm -hmm. they're humans. We don't do that. Well, we're, here we are in the season finale and there's nothing for the Slayer to do. Anya literally poofs into the grave <laughs> to be like, yeah, so uh, uh, Giles is dying. And also he says no magic or slayer powers will work on Willow. Okay, bye. Like, okay, bye. Right. Literally, hey, Buffy, your slayer powers have no power here. We're all screwed. Nice knowing you. Bye. Like, right. there's nothing for Buffy to do. It's not good. Right. You know, I so, know, but it sets up the thing that like Xander, no supernatural force can stop yeah, yeah, her. Yeah. And so that lays lays the track for Xander to fix this from a very human mundane place of love. You right. Know? Which is I great. dig that. It's but well, and I dig yeah. it in a season about human evil, right? If human evil yes. this is the season about human evil, it also needs to be the season about human love. But we're doing right. what, seventeen different things along the way? Yep. So it's like And switching tracks constantly. Totally. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. It feels like it's so there's so much potential here that just didn't I don't know. It didn't it mm -hmm. didn't go anywhere. And I think it's it's cool that they tried it but it doesn't yes it's I, cool I, you know points for ambition like honestly yeah. i enjoy somebody actually trying something and one of the things like no matter how you have felt about any particular season of buffy they're always trying something interesting nobody's resting on their laurels for any particular season of buffy which i really really enjoy i think it's one of the things that makes the show so great um but the, uh, season six has some of the most interesting and ambitious ideas Mm -hmm. um, and it fails to achieve them in certain places. And, you know, and it's it's a difficult thing to pull together. You know, um, it, it's one of those things where at the end of the season, it could have used just a run through just a like smoothing over. But at that point, you're in, you're just getting through it, you know, like, okay, you know, Spike has a soul, boom, we're, we're moving on, you know. Um, but I mean, the Giles thing it bothers me, I think, partially because I love Giles so much. But the way he comes back, the way that he is, the fact that he's laughing at Buffy. I mean, where is, if it's judgment you're looking for, you'll not get it from me. Where's that guy? Like, I want oh, that yeah. dude back, you know? Yeah. And instead we get this, you know? What? I don't know. What is that? Like, I'm, this is me. this is me asking from, like, a writer standpoint. Like, what are they, what, 
What? Okay. What are they doing? What it is is this. Is you know how we used to use Joyce as a conflict vending machine? Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, Right now, Giles is a plot vending machine. He's coming in and he is basically the spackle that we put over the holes that we pounded into the wall by hitting the nail so hard that the hammer went through. Like, Mm. this is what's... He's basically story spackle at the end. Like, we're just pulling out... And this is the thing. Like, why we have Anya teleport into the grave... (laughs) with Buffy and Dawn to say, hey, Giles is dying. He says, no supernatural force can stop Willow. Xander, are you listening? And then, you know, and then like all of this stuff is yeah. it's very, very clunkily done, which is not something like David Fury wrote this episode, but I don't hold him responsible. He inherited some impossible things like he did the best he could given what he was given at the at this time i think he did okay you know um these problems started way earlier in the season especially in a season in which willow's inability to deal with her own grief is what brings buffy back right so if we then revisit willow's grief again and keep that as a consistent theme which we absolutely do not you know, throughout this yeah. season. That's not what this season is about. Um, so Giles coming back now, not really being Giles, but he's also not Giles in season seven either. Like, I don't think we see Giles again, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's he, not great. But when he laughs at her, I'm like, I I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I, had to, I had to stop the episode twice because I'm like, I don't... It's one thing to laugh at your own trauma, right? It's yeah, one right. thing. Mm-hmm. It is one thing to. It, it's one thing to look at your own suffering, and you know, as Carrie Fisher would say, if my life weren't funny, it would just be true, it and that is just unacceptable, be true. right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm here for that, but Buffy so vulnerably is like, yeah, things mm-hmm. have been really bad. Check it out. And yeah. Giles just guffaws. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's not. And I'm not even clear on. on. I I feel. <laughs> I feel. As so, yes. so often with this season mm-hmm. in particular, I think that the show wants me to feel a thing that I don't feel in that moment. Yeah. That scene does not. And the thing is, is that Anthony Stewart Head and Sarah Michelle Gellar cannot sell a scene. My argument is that it cannot be sold. Like, they're both really, really good actors. And they have pulled off things that on the page, I would think, eh, whatever, yeah. you know. Um, but this scene is so awkward and weird. And it just, it 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 feels like the kind of thing, like, um... You know, when I'm writing a novel, you know, every now and again, I'll get to a scene where I need to just move through it and I don't know what to do. And then I'll write something and it'll be like that. It'll be forced. It'll be weird. It'll be out of character and it'll get me to the next scene. But the thing that I have in a novel is the ability to go back and like revise that stuff out later, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, So I understand how this stuff gets written. Like I I can feel that process. Like Mm -hmm. when I see this happening, I'm like, oh, I've been... I've been there. Like, I know what that's like, you know? Yeah. Um, But the thing is, is that there just, I don't think, was time or space to be able to go back and, like, fix that kind of um, connective tissue scene that you write just on basic instinct without really experiencing it through your characters. And that can happen. Yeah. So I understand how it got written. I understand kind of how Giles came to be what he was in this episode. Um, I don't like it. It's not good, but I understand how it happened. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but the thing is, is that Giles hasn't been right since he left, you know, Sunnydale for the first time, you know, when Buffy was dead, he, when he yeah. left Sunnydale, that was the last time I think that we saw Giles. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I've I've complicated feelings because of course, you know, I love Giles. Yeah. But well, you know Yeah, and then Giles apologizes. So they get through mm-hmm. their, you know, they get through their giggle fest and Giles apologizes and Buffy's like, Oh, it's okay, you were right to leave. And Giles says, uh, like, actually no, the most adult thing you can do is ask for help. And Buffy says, Now you tell me. And I'm like, Yeah, dude, now you tell us. Exactly. Now a warning. Like it's like the whole thing on. is stupid. It's, it was stupid for him to leave. I understand that they needed to get rid of Anthony Stewart Head, but there are a million ways you could have done it without breaking Giles. And they just they just broke him. And he you know? doesn't seem. I don't know. He said he tells Willow that he's concerned for her well being, and I'm like, mm-hmm. 
again, like it doesn't feel that way. It feels like Giles wants to put Willow in her place. It feels yeah. like, you know, he's, he says, stay down. Like it's really, right. I mm-hmm. don't know. And, you know, this is, I'm certain, informed by my own read of Willow in this season, but th- I'm with Willow in that mm-hmm. confrontation. I am yeah. with her all the way in that, you know, she implies that Giles is envious of the power that she has. And I think there's some truth to that. Which, by the way, also like a more interesting place to go with this than Giles. Is. And like also the fact that he like he shuts her up. You know, he's in the middle of this big fight where he's there to help Willow. Ostensibly, but he's like, yeah. He's like, now you sit down and shut up and be a good girl, mm-hmm. magically enforced, while I catch up Will I go with talk- Buffy. <gasps> well, I, I go, go have talk a chat? to the person here who I really love. Exactly. Like, it just it feels really weird. Like, Willow is in huge amount of crisis. It's one thing to, like, give Buffy a hug and be like, hey, it's good to see you. But there's something more important and more pressing right now. And to use his magical what's-its to subdue her while he wanders off and just kind of casually has a conversation. Um, Like, that feels weird. It feels like an interruption in the conflict of the story. Like, it's all, it's all just, and especially, especially, like, doing that so that he can have that with Buffy. Yeah. The, The laughing at her trauma when he abandoned her when she needed him most at the age of, like, what was she, 21? Is she Like, I'm sorry, but like, yeah, yeah. like, you know, like, no, she's lost her mother. She died and came back from the dead and now has all these bills. And he's like, later, I'm a bounce. Like, yeah, I don't. (laughs) You need to adult on your own. Bye. (laughs) Um, So, you know. The other thing here, too, that I kind of struggle with, as long as we're talking about our, you know, cis white men, is Xander. Um, I struggle a lot with Xander because of how much I love Xander, Um, which is part of a thing for me is that, like, you know, traditionally in my life, I have a real soft spot for any man who can make me laugh. And Xander is funny. Like, he's inappropriate and horrible, but he's also, like, funny. He's got good delivery and some of his lines are fun and all of this kind of stuff. And there's a lot of fun to be had with Xander. Um, You know, I also like that he grows and he changes and gets better. Remember Xander at the beginning of season four, like all the potential he had then to be like the guy who can talk people through all their things and like see. And this is one of the things that we come with Xander. Like Xander's the one who sees and we have that in season seven, which is kind of fun, you know. Um, But the thing is, it's so inconsistent. It's almost like he's better when the story calls for it. But when he's bad, the text doesn't realize that he's bad and that he has things that he has to like grow through his bullshit has been rubber stamped for most of the series and so you know this moment with willow is wonderful and it makes me cry and i love it as a moment and the i love you it feels like a heroism unearned with the rest of the series taken into consideration Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i agree with that for sure you know um you know, especially. But what's funny is that I love season seven, Xander. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to say just. I'm just, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say especially keeping in mind what we've already said about the the Xander Willow relationship not really being there for a while. Mm-hmm. So it's, I mean, it's an unearned heroism yeah. for Xander in the series as a whole up to this point. But it also, it there's there's not as much weight to it as there could be if that friendship had felt more solid I don't know yes exactly exactly you know and I mean yeah it's just it's weird and the thing is that I love season seven Xander um he has a fucking fantastic moment in potential we're going to talk about that when we get there um and I love him here But it is really difficult for me to resolve all of my feelings about Xander at once because uh, unlike Spike, where I think the text knows what Spike is, Mm -hmm. like he's allowed to be complex and all that kind of stuff. With Xander, we don't, it doesn't feel like we ever acknowledge him as anything other 
than, you know, this wonderful, funny guy who, yeah, okay, you know, he's a geeky little nerd or whatever, but like, but he's, he's good. He's Xander and we love him. And it feels like, I feel like with Xander, I always have this underlying tension of being narratively gaslit, you know, that like we're being told one thing by the text, but the, the reality of what we're witnessing and seeing is something else. And as much as I want to just completely love this moment with Xander, it's really difficult for me to enjoy it as much as I'd like to. Yeah. Well, it, it ties nicely into the men are allowed to contain multitudes and they're allowed to contain Mm -hmm. them and not explore them so right. like we can we're expected to overlook you know his tasteless jokes and his poor treatment of people around him because he's also loving and heroic and a good friend mm-hmm. it's right like, yeah he can be all of those things but if all we're focused on is mm-hmm. xander the hero Right. And we're not addressing any of the other stuff, then yeah, that's a huge problem. <laughs> like it's a huge it's problem. Just, it's that it's that uneasy feeling of being gaslit, which for me is is highly, highly triggering sensation. So like I just I don't care for it. Um but you know, here's a character who is allowed to be complex and all of that that we have simplified down to bitch is gonna get what she deserves, Spike. Yeah. Right? Oh my god. How do you feel about this whole thing? I'm just tired of it because I know where it's mm-hmm. going because I know, like right. you know, I mean, you've talked about this before. We'll talk about it again. It's the the mislead that when you okay. go back and rewatch it makes no fucking sense in the context mm-hmm. of what you're actually doing. If you right. go back and watch it and you're like, oh, I see now he's actually this was all about getting his soul all along and he wants to mm-hmm. do, you know, this and that. But it's like he's so surly and he's so angry and it's and he's so there's nothing ambiguous about what he's doing there there's no two reads for that yeah he uses the words and phrases that he uses are Mm -hmm. not they're not the words and phrases that go a lot of different directions bitch is gonna get what she deserves means pretty much one thing like there's not another when you feel terrible about who you are and what you've done to the point where you're going to go across the world and face torments just to make it right. Is that is that how you express yourself? I mean, is that how you like, yeah, okay, he's Spike, he's a vampire, whatever. No, like, that's just not how you do it. That's not how that works. Um, Spike, right after when he was struggling. But he's also a fictional character misleading the audience. <laughs> It is. No, it's absolutely. And that's the thing is that it's absolutely a mislead. It is not a twist unless when you go back and watch it again all the way through both readings line up and they just don't. So to me, this is deliberate lying to your audience, deliberate mislead. And I hate that, especially because I love that he got his soul. It's one of my favorite things that happens in the series. I also really like that it looks like getting your soul back hurts. Yes. I don't know why that works for me, but it totally does. It I like that hurt. it looks super painful. Yeah. And not just, you know, that he's all like broken and, mm-hmm. you know, beaten up. It's like, you know, he's he's Edward Norton in Fight Club, but he's also like mm-hmm. he gets I don't know. There's something about that that moment when the demon like whacks him on the chest and he's like, ah, you know, and yeah. he's coming back to life in this mystical way. I dig it Mm -hmm. i like that but the whole like and i don't know how many how many snippets of like spike in the cave getting the shit beat out of him do we need well yeah because we keep killing the momentum of the story so that we can go and hang out with spike like okay you know whatever yeah there's a bunch of demon cockroaches that he has to fight great they're crawling up his nose okay like i'm uh, willow's ending the world can we just hang with willow for a little bit like instead of going to spike like spike is important spike is not part of anything that's going on spike just disappearing and all of us having that uneasy sensation of like where's where's spike you know i would have enjoyed that more you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that you could work with that a little more subtly and have that have that work out better for you. But yeah, yeah. overall, like, ugh, God, lots of stuff that I love and yet lots of stuff that at the same time I don't like. And basically what I want to know now, Noelle, is 
What's your favorite yes. part of Grave? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what is my favorite? What is my favorite part of this episode that I don't particularly enjoy? Um right. The, okay, for in terms of just enjoyment, mm-hmm. <laughs> love to see it. Yes. Is Willow thinking at Anya? Oh, yeah. You don't want to call out to them. You want to take away this binding spell. Like she's so <laughs> I love her little Yeah. She's so seductive and her face, like she just reminds me, she reminds me of a cat Mm -hmm. that like, you know, and Anya, poor Anya. Oh, Anya's going through it in this episode. She's like, I don't know how. And Willow just goes, I do. Do you want me to tell you? (laughs) In her little, like, I I don't know. Mm -hmm. There's something about the little seductive evil. Mm -hmm. I am, I am bound by this spell and I can't actually do anything, but I'm still going to communicate with you telepathically like that is the most interesting evil willow right i think mm-hmm. it's not you know willow doesn't live here anymore you know <laughs> you, it's like it's the mm-hmm. i'm just i'm just calmly hanging in the air I'm and just i'm presenting very another innocently, thing that you might yeah, consider yes i'm just innocently asking anya i need you i need you to help like i'm so i'm innocent like it's so good mm-hmm. It's so, so good. And we we lose that because we make like literal wicked witch of the West mm-hmm. fly my pretties jokes later on. Like we lose what could have made Willow. Like I love the idea of Willow as the big bad. And I I think that that Willow, that like I'm going to use my, my evil magic-y you know, mm-hmm. communication powers on you, Willow. Yeah. Much more interesting. So delightful. Yeah. No, it's pretty, pretty damn good. What about you? What's your favorite part? Sandra and Willow on the bluff. Yeah, just, I love you. I love you. I'm just going to be here while you kill everything. I love you. Like, I just, <laughs> that, it gets me just, every time. You. It's so, it's such a wonderful, like, proof of love story, which I love those stories where, you know, somebody has nothing to gain and everything to lose, but they do it anyway just because of love, you know? And, like, he's not trying yeah. to get her to stop. He's just saying, I am going to be here with you while you do this. You are not going to do this alone. And God damn it, Xander. All right, if you enjoyed this conversation, would like to join in, connect with the show on Twitter, follow at Chipperish, and use the hashtag StillPretty. This episode of Still Pretty was brought to you by the Chipperish media producers who support us on Patreon at the power producer level. These people are the reason why Still Pretty is coming to you free and ad free right now. So thank you to our March producers Stephania, Shelley, Rose, Jonathan. Alice, Kristen, Sarah, Christina, Erica, and Abigail. And this week's special message for our power producers. You poor bastards. Your suffering has to end. <laughs> to find out how you too can support Chipperish Media, visit patreon.com slash chipperish. Other ways to show your support, write a great review on Apple Podcasts, tell your friends about the show, or expend way too much of your mystical energies to maintain your powers. We will be back next time with Lessons, the first episode of season seven. Oh my God. <laughs> Until then, so, Mexico, huh? <laughs> <laughs>